Thanks so much to Nord Green for sponsoring today's video. Feeling comfortable today. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back. My name is Bethany. I'm the girl behind Well Love Knits. And in this video, I want to share some tips on how to improve your knitting so that you can knit your own clothes. So I've compiled a list of tips, some philosophies, some things to look out for in case you new knitters out there especially are interested in making your own clothes but these things might not be very obvious to you and I want to save you some frustration and make sure that you are getting started the best way possible. So I have a little list right here that I'm going to go through and I just wanted this video to be kind of casual. We can chat, you can grab some tea, you can grab your knitting and knit along with me and then also all you experienced knitters out there would really appreciate you to chime in as well if there are any things, uh, any tips, any resources that you might have. Uh, definitely share those down in the comments so that our new knitting friends can uh, get all of the knowledge possible. First things first, you need to have the right materials for the items that you want to create. Now there's nothing wrong with budget-friendly yarn. It's actually really great to get started on a budget, but it's worth saying if you are interested in getting a lot of wear out of your creations, you should really pay attention to the materials that you decide to work with. There are a few things that you can consider, such as fiber content, weight, and the texture of the yarn. So personally, I prefer to knit with 100% wool. I'm actually wearing an 100% wool sweater right now. That's knit with one strand of mohair, which is another um, oftentimes 100% natural option too. And that gives it this softness. Wool is naturally soft too. It just depends what kind of um, what kind of wool you're getting. There are some that are itchy, there are some that are softer. You just need to know what to look for. Merino wool, for example, is a very softer option, whereas um, there are some other ones that can be kind of scratchy. That being said, at the same time, there are so many other benefits of working with wool, such as that it is very durable. It's a very durable fiber and it retains its shape very nicely. This is something that I didn't actually know is that it's naturally dirt resistant. It stays clean for a long time. You don't actually have to wash wool sweaters, 100% wool sweaters as often as you would your acrylic yarns or you know any other like cotton, that sort of thing. Um, there is some natural, uh, I think, oils in the wool that really help that out. So you don't have to be washing it so often as well. And it doesn't actually smell. I just washed this one, but it doesn't actually smell if you're wearing it for many uh, wears at a time. <laughs> Above all else, this is a renewable fiber. It's biodegradable, which makes it a really great sustainable option to work with. Wool comes in many different sizes to work with, you know, from like super chunky wool to very thin sock weight wool. So it's very compatible with most all projects. While wool is one of my favorites, that's because I like to wear very chunky, warm sweaters. Um, I'm a fall winter knitter for sure. A lot of people are more spring summer knitters. So there are other fibers that might drape better in spring and summertime, for example, like cotton and silk that has a nice airy fabric. Uh, once you knit it up, it clings to the body a little bit nicer. It has more of a um, fluid, is that the word that I'm kind of looking for? It's more flexible than a very chunky, stiff sweater. So not only do you need to choose the right yarn, because obviously that's going to be what the sweater will turn into or will come from, uh, but you also need to be aware of the right tools for the job. I do want to say though, it's really good to use whatever you have on hand. I certainly promote that, especially if you are just starting out, but if you want to make something, um, like the picture, let's say, if you're following a pattern and you see the, the sample garment there, you should really be following the uh, recommended tools that are listed within the pattern. I mean, if you need to make adjustments to knit with the yarn or the needles that you have in your stash, that is really great. I think that's really good to get creative, but it is more of an advanced technique versus something that's really uh, good for beginners. If you are a beginner, I would just recommend that until you have more experience, it's always better to follow the pattern to a T. So that means using the recommended needles. Needle size is very important because that is going to determine how the final product will actually look. So for example, if you're knitting with too big a needle size, 
your stitches might be a lot looser than the picture of the pattern sample. Um, and then likewise with smaller needles as well, it's going to either make the garment much tighter or just smaller. Um, it will really affect the shape. You might not think so, but it does have an impact. And this way you'll just make the process a whole lot easier on yourself. You'll know, okay, I have everything that's recommended for me and you don't really have to worry too much besides following the instructions within the pattern. Something that beginners really struggle with is tension. Uh, I know I certainly did. So tension basically refers to how, you're, how tightly you're knitting or how loosely you're knitting. And it affects the way that the stitches are appearing on your final garment or finished piece, whatever it might be. Oftentimes for beginners, it looks a little bit messy, a little uneven. You might see some bumps on the fabric. And that's totally normal. It just either means that you're knitting too tightly or too loosely. If you have really big gaps in your fabric, that means you're knitting very loosely. Whereas if you have the bumps, that means you're probably knitting too tightly. One thing to pay attention to is how you knit on the purl side. So how you purl. <laughs> As a beginner, purling can be pretty tricky. So it's not always clear if your stitches are very secure when you're working in purl. So something that you might notice is either that you're working too tightly or you're working too loosely. And if that's the case, you can switch the needle size that you're using on the wrong side of your work to make sure that it's even with your tension on the knit side. So on the knit side, you would use the recommended needle size. And then on the purl side, what you would do is either size down or size up your needle, depending on what your tension does. And that's why it's really important to knit a tension swatch. And those are just those little squares. A swatch will tell you exactly how you knit with the size and the yarn that's recommended in the pattern. The tension is written on the little labels of each skein so you can get an idea of working with this yarn. This is what, these are the number of stitches and rows you are supposed to achieve within a 10 by 10 centimeter square. So on top of switching out the needle, sizing up or down, depending on how you purl, another tip to create a nice even fabric is to practice working with your stitches close to the needle on your left side. So what I mean by that is the close to the tip of the needle, where the point is, where you're slipping your stitches off. It's good to practice to have all the stitches not so far down, but closer to um, the edge so that you can seamlessly slip them off and you can actually work a little bit faster. But the real uh, benefit here is that it's not going to pull and stretch out your stitches. So you might create something a little bit more even. You won't have any pulling and your, your stitches will remain basically the same size the more that you practice. Another tip, a best practice would be to join your work at the very beginning of a row instead of whenever you run out. I certainly do this because honestly, it's not very easy to plan when you're gonna run out of yarn. And sometimes you might be playing yarn chicken and thinking, okay, I'm going to be able to finish this row before I run out and then that just doesn't happen. And then you have to add in a new ball. So the reason that I'm bringing this up and making sure that it stays top of mind for you is that it can result in holes in your final garment and I'll insert a picture because I certainly have at least one garment that has a little hole because I didn't join in at the uh, start of a new round. And so trying to weave in those ends can definitely help secure that hole in place, but it can also result in some bumpiness, um, especially uh, for a garment. So definitely something to keep in mind that Stitching your way through might not always help. It can also create some bumps that you might not like the look of in your final piece. That's why it's important to add in a new skein on a new row because then you can weave in your ends on the sides and it won't be as noticeable as if it were in the very center of your work. Now, if you're working in the round for like a sweater, for example, maybe do something where it's on the side so it's underneath your armpit and many people won't notice or you could do it in the back as well, but more people would notice, but not you, so that's okay. <laughs> so here is a tip for a little philosophy that might actually help you in the long run is to kind of set the mood when you're knitting. <laughs> um, we all think of knitting as a very relaxing activity. It's supposed to not be stressful. We're supposed to de-stress, but maybe you've noticed this. I certainly have. After a very stressful day, my knitting changes because maybe I'm frustrated about something, maybe I'm stressed, I'm anxious about something. That kind of brings my shoulders up, I'm hunched over, it makes me work a lot tighter than if I were 
you know, knitting casually and I was having that even tension we were talking about earlier. So it's amazing how your mental state can impact your knitting. Um, if you're frustrated after a hard day, you may have noticed that your knitting style changes a little bit. Maybe you're a little more tensed up, your shoulders are closer to your ears, your hands are working a lot more tightly than they normally would. Um, compared to when you're working on a quiet Sunday morning, you're much more relaxed, you have not a lot of care in the world, so you can knit with ease. I personally find that if I'm anxious, my jaw is really tense and my shoulders are up, and I just knit really tightly, and um, it doesn't result in a very even fabric like we were talking about earlier. Over time, that can really wear you down and it can lead to you know some kind of injury potentially, or you know you can just I don't know, have like a tense back. It's, it's not a good thing. It's really important to keep in mind what uh, your mood is like. So then you can knit with the proper posture, which will really help you in the long run. Along the same vein, the next tip that I have is to limit your knitting time, which brings us to the sponsor of today's video, Nordgreen. Nordgreen is a Copenhagen-based minimalistic watch company pioneering the next wave of responsible Danish design. Their goal is to combine sustainable practices and also design beautiful functional timepieces. They offer a collection of lovely designs from world famous Bang & Olufsen designer Jacob Wagner. I love the minimalist design that goes with absolutely everything and their pieces are also made to last. On top of that, Nordgreen is transparent about their working conditions, their supply chain, and the materials that go into their products. Every watch purchased from Nordgreen supports one of three social projects run by Cool Earth, Pratham, and Water for Good. So Nordgreen is offering you guys a really great deal. You can get 35% off your purchase with the code KNITS35 until November 30th. So thank you so much to Nordgreen for sponsoring today's video. I certainly really love these watches. You might have noticed that I have a Nordgreen watch on basically every single day. I personally really love how versatile it is with all of my knits because I can change out that band. And it's honestly just a timeless, beautiful design, very simple design that uh, honestly just does what I want it to do. I just want to know what time it is and I want it to look very beautiful and go really well with basically everything that I have. So don't forget to use the code. More info is in the description. I was talking about this in one of my most recent videos. I have been really trying to slow down my knitting and one thing that I have learned from all of, from that mindset is to really limit the time that I'm spending knitting to make sure that I have a healthy relationship with the hobby and uh, to make sure that I'm really producing good quality stuff because, you know, it makes sense. The longer that you're working on something, maybe if you don't take enough breaks, the quality of your effort is going to go down quite a bit compared to if you're clear-headed, if you um, are clear-eyed, you're paying attention to what you're doing, your muscles aren't fatigued. The time that you're spending really can have an impact. I'm sure that we have all had an experience where we're working on a pattern late into the night and our eyes kind of go cross-eyed because you've been staring at the pattern too long, you've been staring at your needles too long, and I know when I'm tired, I make the most mistakes, drop a lot of stitches, and so on. So it's really important to, you know, limit that time, not only for uh, the sake of your finished piece, but also for the sake of your wrists and your joints, everything. It really can have an impact. Um, I know I talk about it a lot, but um, it is important to take a lot of breaks to stretch to make sure that you're taking care of yourself, your body. Um, and producing the best quality for yourself because and or for friends depending on who you're making the piece for the time that you spend away from that project might actually benefit the final result but before you move on uh, from your knitting project the last tip that I want to share is to finish your row please finish your row because I've learned the hard way that it's very uh, important to do that um, especially if you don't have those little knitting stoppers. I know in my knitting essentials video, a lot of you had said that that was an essential for you, is to have those little stoppers at the end so for your needles so your stitches don't slide off. Otherwise, if you don't have those things finishing on a at the end of a row, 
can really help you so that you don't drop any stitches and lose um, your place and, you know, ruin your hard work. <laughs> Anytime I set my needles down in the middle of a row, I do drop stitches because I'm very mobile with my knitting projects. I throw them in my bag and get going, and while they're in my bag, they're shifting around, and some stitches will fall off the needle, and I'll have to go back and repair those, which isn't actually that big of a deal. It's pretty simple to pick up drop stitches. It's not as scary as I think um, we think it is, especially as a beginner. That is something that you absolutely dread. You do not want to be doing. So better to finish on the end of a row. So that's about it for the tips that I have. Those were some, you know, some quick tips and some philosophies that you guys can keep in mind for your next knitting project, especially you beginners out there. Like I said, I really think that these tips will really help you and I hope they did. And if they did, be sure to like this video. I really appreciate you guys being here and watching. And don't forget you experienced knitters out there do leave some tips, anything that I might have missed in the comment section. I really love creating a comment section where we're all discussing and talking about um, our knitting projects and any tips that we might have. It will be really helpful for our new knitting friends. But thank you guys again so much for watching. Don't forget to check out Nord Green and thank you again to them for sponsoring today's video. It really does help out the channel um, and keep us going. So thank you. And I will catch you guys next week. Bye.